Welcome to E360 TV. Welcome to okay, E360 TV. Well, welcome guys. Uh, TV. As you can tell, the live streaming um, and on-demand is not in the house for influential this morning, voices but and enlightened Adrian audiences. Smith is, and I've got uh, Robert Lane with us for today. We offer trending, grassroots, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversations. One destination for it all. E360 TV. Friday morning to you guys. I am, yes, D. Grant Smith, not Dr. Lauren Michaels Harris. Uh, so happy to be with you guys for today. Dr. Harris is doing something very special with Brian, having to take care of him in a special sort of way today. And so uh, what we are going to be doing is you're going to be having some vitamin D. Grant with you for all of this 8 o'clock hour. And uh, we're going to be talking with Robert Lane, who is a uh, narration and voiceover coach for nonfiction audiobook authors. And uh, he's got a fantastic masterclass coming up tomorrow that we're going to be learning about. And we're going to have a conversation with him in just a moment. Now, uh, we were having a little bit of an issue this morning with um, audio. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm looking in the, uh, looking in the comments. Uh, if you can't hear me, let me know because um, we got to figure out that on some end. But uh, we've we, we us uh, audio guys. I've got 22 years radio experience, and I'm pretty sure Robert's got a lot of radio broadcasting and radio or, or uh, audio experience under his belt, considering the work that he does. Uh, we've we've kind of jury rigged a way to to make this thing work. But uh, Robert, welcome to Bathrobe Moments. Great to see you, man. 
Yeah, boy, an interesting start of the day, but that's okay because it is the morning time and we're working out the bugs and we got my cup of joe, so I think we're ready to go. Fantastic. So I want to I want to learn and I want you to share uh, not just about what you've got going on tomorrow with your master class, but also your story and how storytelling is such a big part of what it is that you do. Uh, you know, at, Dr. Lauren is very big on the power of storytelling. That's one of the things that connected he and I together initially. But what I want to know initially from you is what is the story behind the audiobook focus that you have? Um, um, yeah, boy, yeah, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's a good question. A good question. Uh, <clears throat> me, I am an, an audiobook audio producer, 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 helping nonfiction help authors, non authors, authors uh, narrate their, narrate own, their audio own audio book, book um, uh, and, and get, them get them published on Audible, on Amazon, Amazon, and, and Apple and Books. Uh, uh, I call it the AAA, call it AAA Audible, Amazon, Audible, Apple Books. Because that is the... The best, the best uh, well, uh, I should well, say, I should the most say popular, the most popular platform, platform that you have to be on, on uh, as uh, a as published nonfiction author for an audio book, because that's what people, people go to. Uh, you know, and they uh, ask for, ask for um, uh, those platforms, those distribution platforms by brand You know, a lot of people say, oh, hey, are you on Audible? Or do you have your book on Apple Books? Or can you get your book on Amazon? As opposed to just asking for, oh, do you have an audio book? So that's why it's so important to do that. Yeah, I yeah, actually, I, actually I, I am a, a, an audio a, guy. guy. I've uh, uh, been an audio, been audio nerd for nerd years. years. <laughs> actually, I started, I started by, by uh, uh, my, career, my career, uh, career in the uh, entertainment, entertainment world. I've worked four plus, plus years in the entertainment business. business. Uh, first, uh, first starting out, out in radio. In radio. So, so, we're, so we're, we're all the same page. So I used to host some talk shows, music shows. And from there, worked in various facets of the entertainment business. Been on camera, off camera. Camera, uh, behind the scenes audio production. Uh, I started an audio post audio production uh, company uh, called RRP Studios, which uh, I still do to this, this day. Where uh, it's it's more audio post, where you uh, sound design, uh, mixing, uh, music composing for film, uh, that kind of thing. So that's where the uh, audio editing uh, aspect comes in. Um, I worked in, in uh, other facets of the business. Uh, the last uh, 14 or so years of uh, working in entertainment was at 20th Century Fox in Los Angeles on the studio a lot, uh, as, uh, and that was uh, more of a corporate job, but I was working in post-production. Uh, I was the, their feature uh, project manager and oversaw um, getting together uh, all the uh, streaming files. We would create them for all the features, and then those get distributed worldwide in uh, multiple languages uh, to your favorite streaming platform. <laughs> so that's that's what I do over there. Uh, but then uh, I left the, I business the business and, and uh, decided, uh, decided to, to uh, reinvent, uh, reinvent myself, myself and do something, something that I felt, I felt would be more fulfilling. fulfilling. Uh, uh, not, not only just, just for, for myself, myself, but to help, to help other people, people as, well. as well. So I started uh, Robert Lane Coaching, uh, which began as a uh, more of a life coach, career coach type business, helping uh, people navigate through uh, their work environment, teaching them, you know, tools and techniques on how to deal with, uh, you know, time management, how to really create true work-life balance. Uh, and uh, with that, I actually uh, decided to write a book. <laughs> and so I wrote a book. Uh, it's called Lights Action You. And basically what I did is in this book is I, I took my experiences from that 30 plus years of working in the uh, uh, entertainment industry and took various stories and experiences, but with each story tied into uh, one of the coaching concepts, uh, life coaching and career coaching concepts uh, that I teach in my program. And so you get a story and then you get a lesson from the story. So I just didn't want to do, uh, you know, uh, just another self-help book. I want to make it more entertaining. So uh, bring, again, stories. Stories are, are key for sure. <laughs> and so uh, and so that's uh, how uh, the book uh, got put together. Um, after I published the book, um, other authors were approaching me because I did turn it into an audiobook as well and learned the process of how to do that and do it correctly. Um, I was being asked by other authors, you know, how do you do that? You know, can you help me get my audiobook 
put together. So I decided to uh, expand Robert Lang Coaching to now uh, do audiobook uh, teaching uh, authors how to create their own audiobook. But the key is having them narrate their own book. So uh, I help them set up their own recording space. Uh, I uh, teach them the tools and techniques of how to do a great narration. Uh, and then I do all the audio editing that needs to be done after you record your audiobook files. You have to make sure they're clean, that they uh, are to the exact specification for publication. And then I do all the uploading of their uh, audiobook files to Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books for publication. So really, the only thing that an author has to worry about is, is just doing a great narration. And that's uh, that's where the coaching side of it comes in. So I put on the coaching hat and I coach them through the process. And then once they send me their audio files, I take off that coaching hat and put on the audio editor's hat and do my thing behind the scenes. Uh, all the stuff that, that the author doesn't have to worry about. Uh, but knowing that they're guaranteed to be published 100%. And the course is, is the program is just six weeks. So you can get your book recorded, edited, uploaded for publication by the end of the six week program. So it's not three months, six months, a year, you get it done. We, we, we get you accomplished in six weeks because I'm your, not only your coach, I'm your accountability partner. I'll keep you on track. Uh, and I'm also your safety net too. If you ever, you know, if you're having issues or questions, that's what a coach is there to do. So that's kind of how it all lead, led into uh, <laughs> doing what I do now. You, uh, you, you, you answered some questions before I had the chance to, uh, <laughs> to ask them, but you know what, that's par for the course, because, uh, as radio guys, we typically can see such the big picture of what it is that we want to cover. And so I think that, uh, we're actually picking up what each other is laying down before we have the opportunity to actually lay it down. So that's really <laughs> awesome. Um, one of the things I'm curious about is, uh, there's a significance that you have to, 1111 and the fact that you have your master class set up on 1111 will you share with us what that significance is you know 1111 is definitely an interesting number 11 by the way is my favorite number but always has been i don't know why <laughs> but it's just one of those things uh when i was working uh at at fox um they had these you know little parties and stuff and and at a couple different parties they had um a numerologist, you know, oh, go get your, your, your numbers done. And I, I, uh, two separate parties, I went to two different numerologists just out of curiosity. And both of them said that my number is 11, which is <laughs> really funny. So I'm like, oh, okay, I guess it was meant to be. Uh, I'm also a musician. Um, I have a band that's called Lane's Lair. And uh, my second album that I released is called 1111. Uh, now, um, I know there's there's meanings behind the number 11. There's meanings behind seeing 1111, uh, but that's not why I named the album that way. Actually, it has more to do with uh, with my wife. <laughs> because when, um, when we first started, uh, well, I wouldn't say dating because we actually got engaged on our first dates. That's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, when we first started to talk, <laughs> um, she was in Idaho at the time. Uh, I'm in Sedona, Arizona. Uh, and I had uh, uh, come in from, uh, I, had, I used to have this great hot tub uh, outside. And you know, being in Sedona, uh, it's great to just hang out and look at the stars and just you know, enjoy nature. So when I came in, uh, I saw that I received a text from uh, my uh, future wife um, at 11.11. So that's always been kind of a thing with us. You know, like I would text her, you know, 11.11, uh, I love you. Or, you know, <laughs> all that, you know, silly romantic stuff. Uh, but uh, but, that, you know, but that, that's kind of how that number came about. And I thought, you know... Um, my next album or the, the, that I'm going to do is going to be called 1111. So that's how it came out. Uh, but, you know, again, the master class is on 1111. So I guess it's it's the universe aligning or something. <laughs> so here we are. 
It's fantastic, man. Well, in you being in uh, Sedona, Arizona, in the energy hotspot of America, if not the world, that's uh, that's a really cool thing that you're also you're also doing this incredible masterclass on eleven eleven, and uh, you have all these syncopations with it. On the subject of the masterclass, here's what we're going to do. We've got a little trailer for it that we're going to play now before we okay. jump back in, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. You know what's the greatest benefit of having an audiobook coach? Aside from showing you how to set up your recording space, teaching you how to do an awesome voiceover and narration, and showing you marketing techniques for your audiobook, it's support and accountability. Your coach is your support system, there for you to answer any questions throughout the process. And your coach is your accountability partner to make sure you get the job done. You've got, uh, you, you mentioned this a minute ago about how uh, jumping into your uh, masterclass that you have coming up tomorrow and then added to that, you've got this amazing six-week program for audiobook authors to be able to have their audiobook recorded, published, and ready to go out the door before the start of the new year in 2024. Like, how are you able to... Uh, equip people with so much valuable information and prepare them and train them and work with them all the way through. What do we have? Only six, there's six weeks, seven weeks left of the year. Like how is all this possible, Robert? That's, you know, um, when I designed the, your book, your voice audiobook coaching program, um, I wanted to make it as hassle free, uh, and not confusing and overwhelming for the author. Um, because creating an audiobook, there's a lot of moving parts. It's not just, you know, oh, here, let me grab my book and open it up and just hit record and just start, you know, reading and doing a narration. It's, it's much more than that. Um, an audiobook is not one file you just upload and publish. Uh, your book is divided up into, into sections and you record each section. Uh, so, for example, uh, in my book, I have 14 chapters. Well, that's 14 audio tracks right there. Then you have your your open, you have uh, an introduction, you have um, uh, acknowledgments, you have end credits, you have uh, maybe a forward. So there's all these different pieces that you need to record as separate audio files. So in, in the, uh, the program, of course, I teach you you know, how to do that very step-by-step. Step. I'm very methodical when I do my uh, coaching uh, and um, it really makes it so much easier for, for the nonfiction author to do their uh, book and not be so overwhelmed and confused. Because I know some, you know, some authors, uh, and, and this has become a barrier. Some authors go, ah, I can just do it myself. And then they, they go and they try to do it and they realize, wow, there, there's, there's a lot more involved <laughs> than what I thought. So without having guidance to do it, some authors are just like, ah, forget it. And that is not a good thing to do because, again, you're an author. You published this fantastic nonfiction book. That's your brand. You, know, you are an author brand. You are You've created this incredible product, whether it's an ebook or paperback or hardcover. You definitely need to take it to the next level as an audiobook because there are there are a lot of people who go for the audiobook first, 
before they even get the ebook or paperback or hardcover. So that that's an audience that you don't want to ignore. So doing an audiobook is, is really crucial. Uh, but the key is having the author narrate their own book. And that uh, I know for some people can be can be scary because it's like, uh, you know, I don't like I, I don't like uh, public speaking. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't like talking in front of somebody. I don't like talking into a microphone. So mm -hmm. part of the the program uh, that I teach is we do deal with the mindset aspect, being in the right frame of mind, how to do a compelling narration, how to sound conversational, how to be authentic. Uh, and and uh, so I take you step by step through the process. Now, in the program, there is, um, you know, video lessons, of course. Uh, we meet every week. Uh, we have uh, sessions. Uh, there, are, there are two um, plans that you can go with. There's a group plan and then there's there's the one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is kind of funny because more people go for the one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is great. Uh, and I love doing that. Um, but uh, you have our, our coaching meetings, you have videos, you have downloadable reference guides, you have everything that you need uh, to go through the process for creating your audiobook. So the one thing that I do want to share is that when you sign up into the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program, I provide the equipment for you. I send you a microphone. I send you the head, your professional headphones. I send you a sound isolation screen that goes around the mic, pop filter. Uh, we go over the, the uh, recording program that you're going to use to record. And I send you the equipment. That's part of the program. And it's yours to keep. You don't have to send it back to me. It's yours. So if you want to start your own podcast, go for it. Now you got a great mic and headphones and all the professional equipment you need. That's part of the program. Um, once you record your audio files, and again, everything, as I mentioned earlier, is done, you know, it's chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, or, you know, it's all divided into separate sections. Once you record it, you send your files to me. And that's where my audio editor hat comes on. And I make sure it's clean. It sounds great. It's to the exact specifications. Uh, and then I do the uploading for you for publication. And then once your files are done, then I send those final master files back to you as the author and they're yours to keep. You can use them for you know whatever you want to use them for. Uh, and I don't take any percentage of your sales. You own them 100%. It is your audiobook. These are your audio files. Um, you just hire me as your coach and your audio editor and producer, and that's that's it. Those files are yours. There are some companies out there who, you know, will take a percentage or they try to, um, uh, you know, force you in a sense to uh, hire a narrator. Um, you know, no, that's not, that's not the way to do it, especially for a nonfiction author. The reason why you need to narrate your own book is because it's your story. Only you can tell your story only you can speak your story the way you intend it to be heard a narrator i would would have loved to have morgan freeman or, or james earl jones do my book i would have been awesome it would have been great however it would have been their interpretation not mine the stories that i share in my book life action you are personal stories from my you know years in the in entertainment uh industry so i experienced it so I want to tell the story the way that I experienced it firsthand mm -hmm. and only me as the author, I'm able to do that. So you as authors who've written this, this fabulous nonfiction book that you've published, only you can tell that story. You can tell, only you can tell it the way you want it to be heard. And you do have the voice. Again, uh, as we talked about uh, the mindset and uh, uh, that aspect, it's like uh, some people also uh, have, uh, well, I kind of say it, 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 is a, it is a fear in a sense, because uh, a lot of this stuff is fear-based, um, but they hate their voice. Ah, I don't have a voice. I can't do that. And that is so not true. You have a great voice. This thing right here, this head is an awesome resonator. Mm -hmm. This, this uh, voice box you have is unique, and that's what makes you you. Mm -hmm. That's what makes yeah. you so unique. And that's what you're bringing to the table. Because when you wrote your book, what you wrote is in your voice, right? And maybe in the written word, but your voice is in the written word. 
So it only makes sense to take your book to the next level and have mm. you narrate your own voice because now you're preserving the integrity of your written word, your style. You know, especially if you're a, if you if you're a coach or if you're an entrepreneur and you've written a book, or maybe you're, you're a teacher or an educator and you have a how-to book, uh, or or maybe you're a poet, right? Why would you have someone else narrate your own poetry? Ah, no, not at all. You should do your own narration and publish that poetry book or, or a children's book. You know, mm -hmm. if you go to libraries and you read your book to, to kids at the library, why would you have someone else narrate your children's book? So again, you wrote it, you lived it, you experienced it, you definitely need to narrate it and you can do it and you can get it done within the six week program that I teach. Absolutely. If you wanted to have your audiobook done before the end of the year, sign up now because you can do it. You can definitely. I can speak from experience as both being a guy that spent 22 years in broadcast media, as well as I have, um, well, I've got a series of audiobooks that are on my side, but I do have one that is on uh, Audible. And as as even even as a radio dude, even as a broadcast radio guy, you, what you just talked about, Robert, with your program about how you provide the microphone and the audio enclosure and all of the all, all of the technical pieces. Holy cow. Like that's so valuable. Added to that, you coach people on how to speak and how to do all of the technical things and how to do all of the personal like, here's how you communicate your story. How incredibly valuable is that? For me, I had to use my technical skills, my experience, and uh, a couple of other resources. I've got a buddy that does voiceover work, so he helped me do some of the production in. Because, by the way, guys, when you are putting a audiobook onto Audible, you can't just sit in front of any microphone in any room and record your book into uh, a recording software and then export that out to a WAV file or MP3 or whatever, and then send it over to uh, ACX or Audible, and they're just going to upload and go, yeah, that sounds great. Like there's criteria that has to be met. There's audio criteria that has to be met. And so what Robert is offering is invaluable. I'm telling you from experience, it is invaluable to have somebody that knows what the criteria is that Audible is looking for on their recordings and somebody that's coaching you and working with you through this process, dude, that sounds like the absolute best thing ever. Plus you're, you're basically, I, in a way, I'm guessing you're kind of hand selecting their equipment. They're buying it essentially from you as kind of a, you know, distributor, so to speak, but like you're not renting it out to them. So you're not getting like hand me down gear. You're getting new stuff and then you don't have to give it back. Plus like you said a minute ago about not taking any royalties, that your service sounds like the most fantastic thing in the world, Robert. I'm so excited that you're doing this, and, and this is such a wonderful thing to know. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, I vetted a lot of uh, equipment, um, and uh, and in the program, uh, there's very specific lessons on how to set it up. Again, very methodical, so there's no confusion. There, you know, it's not a hassle. And and because, again, you want to take away the frustration of trying to figure it out on your own. Oh, OK, I got to find a studio. I got to rent a studio. Now I got to find an audio editor. Now I got to do this. Now I got to do that. And that it's it just it's very overwhelming. So let's take all that away. Let's take the hassle away. This is what you need to do. Here's your equipment. Again, it's part of the program. You, you want to enroll, we'll send you the equipment. We get you set up. We start our weekly meetings. Uh, you start sending me files. We get your book done. Uh, I make sure to keep you on track again as your coach and accountability partners because you can get your book done in six weeks. You really can. And we can get you published on those three platforms. Uh, so it's, you know, again, taking away the hassles is so important uh, for uh, for the author because I, I want you just really to do a great narration and I guide you through it. Um, and when it comes to doing the actual recording, you first send me a sample, you know, it's here, you know, uh, send me a, a paragraph and I want to hear it first before I give you the green light to start recording, you know, mm -hmm. your book officially. That way I can hear, oh, you know, I listen, you know, and I listen very critically to everything. Uh, and when I do my editing, by the way, I don't, you know, run it through a program, you know, to clean it up and go, okay, we're done. 
I listen mm -hmm. to it from beginning to end. You know, I probably average about 40 hours, give or take, per book. And that's just editing. Mm -hmm. I will go through it with a fine tooth comb to make sure that it sounds great. That there is a mm -hmm. little tick or a nick or mouth noise or something, and I don't like it. I'm removing it. You know, whether yeah. somebody notices it or not, I notice it because I treat your book as if it was my own. Mm -hmm. And I care about you as an author and I want to make sure that your brand, your product is as you know, as the best thing that it can possibly be. So I will listen and do whatever it takes to make it sound great. Then of course, um, making sure it is to the exact specifications for publication because you know, D like you mentioned, there are very specific uh, guidelines that you have to follow uh, when it comes to publishing. And if your book doesn't meet those guidelines, guess what? Audible reject <laughs> and it's yep. back to square one. Yep. So that's why I do the uploading for you. Because if for some reason uh, a file does get rejected, I know about it right away. I know what I need to do to make any adjustment. And I re-output, re-upload, uh, re make sure it's accepted, and we're good to go. So, again, you're guaranteed to be published. You're not going to have your yeah. book uploaded and then, you know, you get an email saying, oh, sorry, uh, you, your audiobook is rejected. And I know mm -hmm. an author, uh, you know, that, that went to another studio and did it himself and then went to upload and acx rejected it oh and that's and that's yeah. not a thing you want to happen when yeah. you do your audio yeah well let's talk about the before there's two things i want to say here number one what you said a minute ago about the value of your book being recorded in your voice because it is your story versus mm -hmm. like what you said uh how awesome it would be to have morgan freeman or you know james earl jones for all of us old school star wars fans sure um, or, you know, um, what, one of my favorite voice, famous voices, Terrence Stamp. Now, if you've, if you've watched any, he, he was not a huge actor, but he was the original General Zod in the 1978 and 1980, uh, Superman one and two, uh, his voice is incredible. I would have loved it in a way to have written something that Terrence Stamp did the voiceover for, or Michael Caine for that matter. Oh, or Christian sure. Bale, for that matter. Like I could go on and on, but none of those people are me. So for my writing and my story to be conveyed in the way that communicates my heart, that's got to come from my voice. Because doesn't the Bible say, "From the heart, the mouth speaks"? So for my story to come through, and for your story to come through, to come through your heart, up through your vocals and out and into the ears and the hearts and the minds of the people that you want to reach. Like that's such a powerful thing. And what it reminded me of Robert was uh, going to use another superhero reference here uh, for a lot of people in the nineties, when they, when you ask them, who is your Batman? They will say, mine is Kevin Conroy. Kevin Conroy was never on. Well, he was on a TV series once. But for the most part, Kevin Conroy was the voice of Batman on Batman, the animated series. He wasn't Val Kilmer. He wasn't Michael Keaton. He wasn't Christian Bale. He wasn't George Clooney. He wasn't Ben Affleck. And he wasn't Robert Pattinson. But and to a lot of people, because he was the voice, he conveyed the character just with his voice. That is such the vocal side of things resonates with people in such a powerful and profound way, which segues us into why investing your energy and your time and your resources into producing a audio book, an audio version of your book leads into people experiencing it that might not otherwise do so and becomes not just one. This is what I want to ask you about, Robert, a multitude of additional revenue streams for you, because not only do you have a tangible print version and a digital Kindle version, we're talking about just Amazon for the most part, but like me on my site, which is growthfarming.com, I produce and publish my own digital books and audio books for all of my stories and all of my other books, each one potentially its own revenue stream for you, those of you guys who have books. And if you go the Amazon route and the other distribution routes, having an audio book gives you more revenue streams. Robert, will you expound upon that a little bit? 
Yeah, and that's that's absolutely true. And this is something that we will be talking about in the audiobook mastermind class that is tomorrow, uh, which uh, I hope uh, everybody will will go to because it is free. I'm doing a free master class tomorrow, uh, and I know you have scrolling at the bottom there on the ticker the uh, link. Uh, Click that link, grab your free ticket. <laughs> All I can say because we will do a deep dive into uh, everything that we're talking about. I'm going to share with you a whole bunch of uh, uh, audiobook stats and facts that I think you'll find very interesting. We'll definitely go do a deep dive into what it takes to do a great narration. We'll talk about the marketing aspect as well. Uh, I got a special guest lined up uh, that'll uh, be joining us on the show uh, tomorrow for the masterclass. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, it, it, we'll be covering a lot of, a lot of that, um, but uh, creating a, another avenue, a revenue stream is definitely a great thing because now, now that you have your, your book available in various formats, do some marketing, right? Buy my audio book and get my ebook for half price. Or, you know, if you buy my paperback, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sign it and give you half off on the audiobook. Or, what, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many things that, that you can do marketing wise to get your product out there. And, you know, again, the other thing with audiobook is, especially for people, you know, who, uh, you know, are, are sight challenged or who are blind, audiobooks are, you know, a great way for, for people who are not able to read able to enjoy your book and hear your book and hear you as the author tell and speak your story and you know that that's definitely uh, uh, an audience that you don't want to exclude uh, so again there's a lot of benefits for having an audio book and plus i mean again depending uh now i do, you know again i focus on audible amazon and apple books because those are the ones to go to for for most people but again, there are other distribution platforms and depending on what your marketing strategy is, and if that works for you, if you want to be on, you know, you know, the the Barnes and Noble Digital, and now Spotify is jumped on the the audiobook bandwagon. Uh, you know, there are there are a, a lot of other distribution platforms that you can get your book published, you know, globally, and that's fine if that's uh, if that fits into your marketing uh, plan. And that is something that we talk about in the audiobook coaching program as well uh, to find out what it is that you want to do with your book and where you want to market it, because that will also uh, play a factor into do you want to be exclusive on Audible, Amazon and Apple Books, or do you want to be not exclusive and just put it anywhere and everywhere? Hmm. Now, again, you need to know what your strategy is because putting yourself anywhere and everywhere may not be the best strategy for you. Mm -hmm. You know, just because it's, it's, it's everywhere, you know, that can actually cause more confusion for people in a sense. So when they have something specific to go, to, you know, I'm on Audible, Amazon, Apple Books. Great. I know exactly where to go. I know where to get the book, you know, or if your audience is international and in other places that maybe those platforms don't reach, then yeah, absolutely. Uh, make sure you, you have your distribution platform where your audience is so that you can get the most benefit from your uh, from your sales. But yeah, definitely having an audiobook and having other pl uh, formats of your book is is great because that does boost your revenue stream. Because now you got multiple revenue streams, but you have to promote it and you have to talk about it all the time, um, which actually um, reminds me that if you have a book and you've published a book, maybe you published it a year ago or two years ago or 10 years ago, don't let your book die on the vine. Are you promoting your book? How, are you, you know, have your sales dropped or people don't even know your book exists? Resurrect it, right? Resurrect it from the dead. Do a relaunch. Turn mm. it into an audio book. You can relaunch your book again. Now you're going to have an audio book sales and that will also boost your ebook, paperback, and hardcover sales as well. And another interesting fact is that people who buy audiobooks also tend to buy either an ebook or paperback as well because they mm -hmm. like to read along as they listen to uh, your book or audiobook. So that again boosts more sales. So uh, yeah, that's that's a great thing. So here's something here's something worth noting, and uh, I, I'll encourage you to to encourage other people to go down this road too. Add this to your marketing for yourself, Robert. 
Uh, I learned this from Alex Hermosi, who if, if you haven't followed Alex Hermosi, uh, jump on his YouTube channel. He's just such a brilliant business guy. But one yeah. of the things that I learned from him, and I, I've done this now twice with two or three different books, no, three different books. I've done it with Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. I've done it with Alex Hermosi's book, and I did it with uh, one other one. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. But reading the book, the paperback, while listening to the audiobook, here's what it does. It, it helps you retain and, and like hold and remember that information 10 times better than just listening to it by itself or just reading it by itself. That double combination of reading it and listening to it at the same time like brings that information and that material into your psyche and into your consciousness in a much more exponential level. So since that's such a great way to actually be able to learn and grow for you, for your authors that already have the print version and they're releasing their audiobook version, that gives an added amplified reason to have both. You know, a really good thing uh, when you listen to an audiobook and, uh, and you have, you know, especially a paperback, and it's something that's that's informative. You know, again, if you're a coach, or maybe you even have, maybe you've written a book, uh, maybe you're not a coach, but you've written a book about, uh, you know, how I overcame a toxic family, you know, growing up in a toxic family or something, you know, and that was your story, and you wanted to share your story, because you have some really valuable information, you know. And I'm listening to your book, and I'm, and I will grab your, you know the paperback and then the highlighter because there's going to be things that it's like wow that that's really great that really stands out to me or that really speaks to me you know and I, and I go through and I, I highlight things you know in, in books that I'm listening to especially you know from uh, from other coaches or other inspirational books uh, that I listen to and I will also have a physical copy because I like doing that because then I can always go back and, and reference certain things that, that stood out to me in, in that physical copy as well. So yeah, it's a really great thing to listen to it and and follow along. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm I'm curious a little bit. I want to know a little bit more about you, Robert. We've been talking about all the technical <laughs> stuff, all the businessy things, all the professional stuff, which is fantastic. You've got a background in radio. You spent a lot of time doing all kinds of audio things. You've worked in the entertainment industry. You've worked in movie sets. You've done all kinds of just like amazing things. You have such an incredible story, but I really want to know, man, what is it that lights your fire outside of all of this stuff or maybe inside of it? Like, what is it that like just sets your heart on fire? And you're like, yes, this is the thing I'm most excited about. What is that? Um, well, I'll tell you, I, I love what I do. I love being an audio coach and producer. I, you know, I, it's funny. Like when I started my coaching business, I, I, I was still, find my niche, you know, like, but I'll tell you, you don't find your niche, your niche finds you. Mm. And that's really what, what happened. It's like, okay, I wrote my book. I, I created an audiobook coaching program. And now I have just married the two together, two things that I love doing. I love coaching. Mm -hmm. I love helping people. And I love doing audio. You know, some people would find editing and doing the thing. Oh, it's so tedious, but I love doing it. You know, it's just, it's it's something I love doing. So I get to do what I love. That's why uh, this this is you know, this job is really not a job. It's just something mm -hmm. I love doing, and uh, I'm I'm really excited and happy to help other authors. And you know what? You know what really lights my fire? When I do the final output of the final audio file. That's where I really get to listen because when I'm editing, I'm focusing on editing. So I'm not, you know, I'm listening for other things. But now when I do the final mix, I get to listen to the author narrate, you know, that particular chapter or you know whatever I'm working on. So I get to really listen to it. And I tell you every time and I've done a lot of audio editing every time I listen to an author narrate that chapter and I output that I get sucked into their story. I'm mm -hmm. engaged into their story, which which tells me that that author did a fantastic job. You know, uh, there's times where I, I, I output the file, I send it to the author, get it uploaded for publication. And then I'm like, I'm chomping at the bit, like, where's the next chapter? What happens yeah. next? I want to know. That is exciting. And that makes what I do as a coach uh, 
worthwhile. That's that that's my purpose. That fulfills my purpose. It, it gives me, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, a purpose of yeah. I help this author narrate a great audiobook. I'm sucked into the story to tell, and so that that is like validation that the author did a great job, you know. And sure, you know, I coach them, but it's the, it's they're doing. They're the one who's doing the narration, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. They're the one who's telling their story in their own unique style, and I love hearing that. Love hearing so, that. So, both with your masterclass that you have coming up tomorrow, your free masterclass, which by the way. I've kept the ticker going this entire time so that there isn't any reason why anybody could say, oh, that sounds really good, but I don't know what link it is. Yes, you do. Just look below. There it is. I'm curious. Who specifically, like of all the, you you work with nonprofit authors, yes. But if you could name, talking about finding your niche and your niche finding you, who is your niche, Robert? Like, what type of nonfiction author is best to just be magnetized to your masterclass and to work with you? Like, who is it that you feel the most passionately called to serve? That's that's a pretty heavy question. You know, and honestly, I would say almost uh, almost every nonfiction author uh, should do this. Um, whether again, whether you have a story that that you needed to tell, uh, maybe it's an experience, uh, especially coaches and entrepreneurs, people who've written books. You know, if you're a weight loss coach or a career coach or a relationship coach or you know a finance coach, and you've written a book, uh, you should definitely narrate your own book because you, right that that's your coaching program. Why would you have somebody? else narrate your program when you teach your coaching program right that doesn't make sense so you know and again uh as i mentioned earlier about poets uh you know and, and children's books definitely those are people uh that uh, that should do this um yeah it's you know it, it's it's really open to to any nonfiction author and so here's the thing when I do, uh, when I talk to a potential client to sign and in, enroll into my audiobook coaching program, we have a meeting first. We do like this. We do a Zoom meeting first. It's not like one of those things where you have a this, you know, a landing page that has that you scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll just to get to the bottom. And it's like, you know, give me your credit card, sign up, and that's it. That's mm-hmm. very impersonal. I don't work that way. Before I sign anybody into my program, we have a consultation. And it's a free call. It's a free meeting. You know, it's like between 15 to 30 minutes. We talk about your book. We talk about your goals. We talk about your marketing strategy. I give you a, a more in-depth description about the audiobook coaching program that I teach. Uh, and uh, and if it resonates with you, I get you enrolled. But I want to talk with you first because the, what's so important is establishing a relationship with mm-hmm. uh, with you as the author. I want to establish a, you know, a working relationship relationship with you uh and you know what if if we click and it works and you're excited and you want to do your book uh great let's do it six weeks your book is done uh you know and and you know what if it's something that you don't feel confident or well confidence things under i'm I'm gonna make you confident when you (laughs) go through the program but if it's something that doesn't resonate with you for whatever reason though i think it should because you do need to have an audio book and not exclude that market uh, then fine, that's okay. I'm not going to hard sell you into doing something that you're not comfortable with because you have to be comfortable. You have to be relaxed. And because you bring that, again, those intangibles are what makes a great audiobook. Think about when you published your book in the first place, that feeling that you had. What was the drive and the purpose and the core reason of why you wrote your book in the first place? Why was it so important for you to write this book and put it out there in the world? for other people to read because you have a story to tell and it's important. It's important. So narrating your own audiobook again, enhances that story and having an intangible, that feeling that you had when you wrote your book, that's what you bring again to the table when you do your narration, because those subtle things, again, the intangibles, the things that maybe you can't physically grab, but you can feel it. That's the, what takes a, a mediocre audiobook to a fan freaking fantastic, mm-hmm. awesome audiobook. 
because yeah. now people are engaged. And that's why when I do those final uh, mixes and I listen and I'm, I'm engaged, that's what they did. They brought that intangible into your reading. And it's like, wow, this is a really great story. I love doing it. <laughs> so on the subject, because I really want to push your uh, push your masterclass tomorrow. If you could say that there's one main gigantic game changing difference that attendees that attend tomorrow are going to walk away from. What is that one massive game changing difference? What is the one reason that by far they should make sure that they do not miss your masterclass? You know what? The one thing is believing in yourself. And what I mean by that is you can narrate your own audiobook. You can do it. Uh, I, I've been looking at, at the comments. I know Lori. Hi, Lori. Hi, Robert. Uh, <laughs> everybody who's been in the chat just want to say hello. I do I do see that you're there. I appreciate it that you guys are hanging out. Uh, and I know Lori mentioned, you know, that, that that she doesn't want to narrate her own voice. And you know what? You know, there may be uh, reasons why. Uh, it may not work for her in her specific case, but you know, again, uh, you should have your book as an audio book. Uh, and if you do find an area, you're still going to need to hire somebody to do the editing and all that. So uh, I do that as well. If someone just wants to hire me as an audio editor, I can do that. You know, that's also an option. But the takeaway for you to go to this master class is you're going to learn what it takes to do a great audiobook. I'm gonna go through tools and techniques. You know, I talked about the intangible and I, you know, I also we will be talking about the practical aspects of it too. So, uh, but you can do it. That's your takeaway. You can do it. And, uh, you know, again, if you wanted to get your audiobook done before the end of the year, if you signed and enrolled in the program now, you can definitely do it before the end of the year. And you know what, that could be a great thing. Think of it from a business standpoint. What a great tax write-off, right? You invested in your business. Your business is being an author. That's your business. So that's your brand. And if you're you're looking for something uh, to help with your taxes next year, do your audio book. It's just one more thing that you can write off for your business. <laughs> great suggestion. Great suggestion. One more thing, uh, and then we're going to wrap everything up. And Robert, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you for spending your Friday morning Thank you. Uh, here on Bathrobe Moments, man. It's been a wonderful uh, chance to get to connect with a fellow, uh, <laughs> we consider ourselves audiophiles, radiophiles, I don't know what it is. Uh, but yeah, dude, this has been fantastic. One of the big things you've talked about several times is the power of storytelling and how storytelling is a superpower and how storytelling through the audiobook dynamic amplifies the power of the story. Will you dive a little deeper into why this side of storytelling is such a superpower? Storytelling is a superpower. Uh, you know, um, let's do an analogy. So let's say you're a, a weight loss coach and you've written a book. You know, here's weight loss coach A and weight loss coach B, they're both equally qualified in what they do. However, weight loss coach A has a book and weight loss coach B doesn't have a book, uh, you know, or an audio book for that matter. Uh, and so what's great about having an audio book is that weight loss coach A has, a, has an audio book, which now solidifies their expertise in their space because people look at you as, as a published author, like, well, you know, you're an expert in your field. And they're more apt to get clients through their audiobook and through their, uh, you know, being a published author than, uh, you know, weight loss coach B, who, you know, had to struggle with, uh, you know, the marketing and cold outreach and doing all the things that we hate doing. <laughs> you know, but coach uh, A has, an, has, has a published author and has this audiobook, but people can actually hear them. They can hear them speak and hear them talk about their coaching program and like, wow, I resonate with that person, right? Why, why do you work with a specific coach? Because you resonate with them because they speak to you and having an audio book is a great way to bring in more clients, especially if you're a coach. Yes. Yes. And everything you just shared about the resonance. And I don't think that this is ironic either. You are in Sedona, Arizona a place that has all kinds of beautiful and amazing amplified energy resonance. 
So it makes perfect sense that you would be so uh, in tune. There's another metaphor. Uh, <laughs> so in tune with the resonance that it takes. Robert, what you're doing is a fantastic gift to all of the writers, authors, and storytellers of the world. Uh, speaking on behalf of everybody, man, I, and somebody that, like I said before, like I've got experience doing a lot of this stuff, knowing that I'm going to be sending people your way, dude, because knowing that there's somebody that um, not only provides the insight and the guidance, but helps to provide the equipment. I think that's one thing that also gets in people's way because you can go on musiciansfriend.com or you can go to uh, any of these you know, websites and stores that have, or Amazon. You can go and be like, okay, I need a, I need a microphone. Well, there's 12,000 of them to choose from and several of them have five-star reviews by tons of people, but which one is going to be best for me? I also, do I need an enclosure? What is that? I don't even know if you've, if you've never done anything in broadcast, you don't even know what that is. There's all kinds of unknowns. You can try to, like Robert said before, you can try to figure it out on your own and be playing this troubleshooting uh, kind of, we're going to shoot stuff at the, at the wall and see if it sticks, see if it works. And you could spend a lot of money, a lot of time and end up in a lot of frustration with things that either don't work the way that you want them to, or you're not exactly sure if it's sounding the way that you think it or the way that it's supposed to sound. So just on the technical side of things, Robert's your guy. Added to that, confidence is king. And that's something that uh, Dr. Lauren has been helping me with, actually. Uh, I'm a really confident person, but I've become more confident in just the past two and a half, three months from having more experiences with him and with you guys here on Bathroom Moments. But elevating your confidence elevates your game in every way. And so by having somebody like Robert in your corner to elevate your speaking confidence, elevate your presentation confidence, and elevate your marketing conf confidence is a game changer. So do not hesitate. Whether Here's something. I'm gonna, just going to put this out there. If you have considered writing a book, if you have considered doing an audio book, but you haven't gotten started yet, and... If you're somebody that has done both, go to this free masterclass. Go sign up right now, eventbrite.com slash e slash your book, your voice, audiobook masterclass tickets. Go get in right now before it is too late. Robert, thank you so much for your time, for your energy, for your story, and for sharing your beautiful magic with us today, man. Oh, my, my pleasure. Uh, again, it's, you know, like they say, you know, do what you love, love what you do. Uh, I feel like I'm there as, as an audiobook coach and producer. Uh, there's a guy or someone in the comments that says, believe in yourself. Yes, believe in yourself. Own your voice. Love your voice because you can do this. You can get your own audiobook. And please join me for the uh, the, the free masterclass tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, very informative. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing awesome. you there. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Robert. Great job today. Guys, uh, appreciate you allowing me to be the fill-in host for Dr. Lauren. He will be back on Monday in his bright, beautiful, and boisterous self. So you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, a fantastic weekend, and we'll all see you again very soon. Shamelessly displaying my state of mind